poor people's food or something they would dump on your bowl if you was in jail in Asia. Well, this is your proof of your poverty. Veganism is a privilege. This is something that's been stated a lot these days. No offense, but veganism is a privilege that is not accessible to all. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining this issue from the philosophical, environmental, and socioeconomic perspectives using some statistics. And it gets more and more important toward the end. So let's see if the general public's response to the rise of veganism holds true. So to discuss this, we first need to establish both the definitions of privilege and veganism. So the definition of privilege is a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available to only a particular person or group. Now, according to the vegan society, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. So the point of veganism is to cause the least amount of pain, suffering, and deaths possible. It is an ethical philosophy against animal abuse and all oppression of sentient beings. So veganism as an idea for justice, equality, and compassion itself isn't a privilege. Because every functioning person can have a particular idea without a special right, advantage, or immunity, right? Is being anti-racism a privilege? No, it is a movement. So as we say, being vegan, you don't do vegan, you are vegan. So when people talk about it being a privilege, what are they talking about really, we all know this, they're referring to the diet. Of course you need to align your actions with your values and eating a plant-based diet is one of the things you should do to be vegan. And yes, being able to choose what you eat is a privilege, but there's something fundamentally wrong in this claim. The definition of veganism does say, as far as it's possible and practicable, so if it's impossible for someone to eat a fully plant-based diet without harming themselves or causing survival issues, they are excused. This this applies to, for example, people with a severe eating disorder, rare medical conditions, and many sustenance hunters and indigenous people and tribes around the world who rely on the natural ecosystem of their habitats, or someone who's not financially independent. They are excused because they're not granted the advantage or immunity to always do so. So consuming animals at the expense of the animal's pain, suffering, and death is absolutely a necessity. Therefore, it is justified, meaning if you're one of those people, you are vegan vegan by definition, if you try your best to choose your actions that cause the minimum suffering possible. In terms of diet, eat fully plant-based foods whenever you can choose to. The definition of veganism itself alone should be enough to explain that it cannot be a privilege because it literally takes those people who cannot eat fully plant-based always into account. The point is, there are many beneficial and helpful privileges that only the privileged can afford. But those things should never be hindered just because they're privileges. So here's the problem. Is eating a plant-based diet really so impractical for so many people in the Western developed countries? We have two main factors to talk about. One, cost or price. Two, accessibility. Veganism earned the name of a privilege first because it was perceived by society as a trend for healthy eating or lifestyle, which is again false. But for the sake of the argument, you don't have to eat every kind of nuts and seeds every day to be healthy on a plant-based diet. And definitely not vegan alternatives like plant-based burgers, sausages, and cheeses, etc. They're not only not essential but pricey because most of those products are new. It is a new market. To be healthy, we should of course be eating a whole food plant-based diet. Next time you go to the grocery store, I'd like you to compare the prices of animal products in general and whole plant foods, some fruits and vegetables, and most canned beans and corn, rice and pasta are usually some of the cheapest things you can get at any grocery store or supermarket pretty much anywhere in the world. According to this study, the affordability of a healthy and sustainable diet, which looked at families of four of various socioeconomic status, it is estimated that eating a planetary healthy diet, which is mostly plant-based, can save them 1200 US dollars a year. Now, I said the same thing in my last video responding to the claim, not everyone can go vegan. And an anti-vegan viewer said this in their comments. Can beans vegans promote is poor people's food or something they would dump on your bowl if you was in jail in Asia? Why would I want to spend a euro eating prison food? Another person said, We evolved so much to the point of not having to worry about food, but instead, we prefer to eat worse than a slave. And listen to what this last person said, And I don't care that meat has been eaten for thousands of years? Well, this is your proof of your poverty. So thank you to those four non-vegans for confirming that plant foods are everywhere on earth and are cheap. And this happens all the time. 
Anti-vegans would argue against veganism by claiming that it is a privilege, but at the same time attack veganism by telling vegans how privileged meat eaters are. How convenient of an argument is that? Now let's look at some statistics. According to the World Resources Institute, people in wealthier regions are getting more animal-based protein than plant-based protein and vice versa. And when we look at the cross-country comparisons, we can see the strong and positive correlation between meat consumption and GDP. China, for example, they got super super rich over the past decade and guess what happened? Its meat consumption per capita skyrocketed and I'm going to explain why exactly this is the case and is a problem. So to do that, we need to talk about how food is produced and food security. To produce plant foods to feed humans, it is simple. We grow plants and eat them. But to produce animal foods like meat, dairy and eggs, before we're able to feed ourselves, we need to feed non-human animals that eat way more than humans, which takes more land, more water and food itself. So it should be common sense that animal-based foods are more expensive because they're more resource intensive. The problem is, where are those resources? Much of the world's agricultural land and over 65% of all grains and seed are manipulated by a few large companies from the West that produce over 80% of all animal products in the world. 82% of the starving children live in countries where there is a surplus of food production, but most of the food produced is fed to livestock that is consumed by the West wealthy developed nations like the US and European countries and yes these regions consume the most animal products so our animal based diet largely relies on those countries resources leading to the suppression of their education and their ability to develop their own agriculture using their own resources this is a serious human rights issue therefore it often comes at the expense of not just trillions of non-human animals but also human suffering in fact in the west much of the required daily protein is obtained from plant foods anyways and much of the animal based protein is over consumed. Humans are starving and having their land encroached on by deforestation so we can have the land to grow animal feed and fatten up the animals and eat them for our unnecessary sensory pleasure. So you tell me which diet sounds more like a privilege. There's a reason why a country consumes more meat as it gets richer. The reason is simple. Eating meat is considered a privilege because from the environmental and socio-economic perspective that is exactly what privilege is. Aren't we privileged enough to legally mass murder trillions of animals a year and cause human suffering for our taste preference without having to worry or even think about their lives? How about people working at slaughterhouses, commonly suffering from PTSD and depression so consumers can avoid them? In the US, for example, a large number of the slaughterhouse and meatpacking workforce is undocumented immigrants who have no power to speak up and protect themselves from the filthy and dangerous work conditions and human rights violations. So how can you say that veganism is even a white privilege? So this fact, therefore idea that meat eating is a privilege fueled by the western society is what's driving China's meat consumption today, where much of the beef consumed is imported from Brazil. Not to mention 80% of the Amazon deforestation is directly caused by cattle ranching or beef production. Livestock production in many parts of the world is largely dependent on cheap soybeans from Amazon, which is the leading driver of the mass deforestation. Around 80% of all soybeans produced in the Amazon are either used as feed for livestock animals to be exported or directly exported for livestock productions that includes pig, poultry and fish farming in developed countries or as cooking oil. To meet the demand for cheap soy, the deforestation encroaches on land inhabited by over 300,000 indigenous people. A number of the local activists are being murdered for attempting to protect their rights, land and resources. I'm going to be talking about how our diet is driving deforestation and those human rights violations specifically in the Amazon region in my next video. So ultimately, globally speaking, plant foods are more accessible and affordable than animal based foods in general. Eating fully plant based can be a privilege for some depending on their medical condition and the environment they are in. However, the claim veganism is a privilege is entirely false and cannot be true because it disregards the definition of veganism itself which takes those who aren't privileged enough to always eat fully plant 
plant-based into account. If anything about veganism was a privilege, it would be the education on it. In most cultures, consuming animals is prevalent, so vegans should never blame or shame non-vegans who aren't aware or educated about the ethical issues and in terms of diet, the environmental issues, but instead educate them, give them information and support. And again, this should never be used as an excuse or justification for not trying to reduce suffering as much as possible. In a future video, I will be debunking the claim, veganism is a white privilege, which is even more disgusting and disappointing. Please share this video to combat the cognitive dissonance and to educate people about the reality. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video, which is again about Amazon deforestation. Stay tuned.